Alright, welcome back to Let's Play a Victoria 2. Um, yeah, the Turkish Caliphate's apparently trying to butter us up, and <clears throat> I feel I deserves you, you deserve some explanation about why you haven't seen any stuff about me attacking uncivilized people, and that's because, uh, well, the holidays happened, and uh, I've been busy doing stuff. So, um, yeah, but, uh, um, I'm also going to be trying to use, uh, figure out some new techniques and stuff for, for doing videos to a bit more, bit more, I don't know, more, bit more of a professional look. I'm not going to, like, put, you know, intros in my videos or anything, but, um, I've also, uh, noticed a distinct lack of enthusiasm in my, uh, some of my newer videos. Uh, I actually... I've had to re-record this two or three times because I <clears throat> I just felt the recording didn't sound good. And there's a lot of things in my, I guess, delivery that uh, bothered me. Um, it was just really boring. And, and I mean, doing a game like this, it's like, uh, there's a lot of, you know, oh, this is happening. Oh, look at this. Rome has got two points on this guy, you know, so it's, it's kind of good, it comes with the nature of the game, that if you're not really engrossed with what's happening, it's, it's going to seem really dry, I suppose, so I'm going to try to avoid that as much as possible. I also want to basically make my presentation a bit smoother. I don't like all the jump cutting. Uh, it looks... It doesn't look bad, but it looks really abrupt, so, um, I don't waste too much time on this, but, uh, yeah, that's something I'm looking to fix. Also, uh, my other games, <clears throat> Star Control 3 in particular, I want to revisit, I mean, I didn't give up on it or anything, but I just hadn't done anything in a while, and that's because DOSBox is weird, eh. It runs weird on my computer, at least. So, there's uh, a few problems with that game specifically, but they're not anything major. I could fix them, uh, give it enough time and enough effort. But anyway, about this game... Oh, and uh, Dwarf Fortress was always just the kind of thing that I was going to do um, as a side thing. So... I may or may not do that. It was like my E, my not my E three, but my uh, my my uh, Civ four videos. I was just kind of doing them because I was playing it, and uh, yeah. So with this game, well, my goals are pretty close to being succeeded, um, if that even makes any sense. I just have this strip of land here to grab, and. Maybe some islands or in ports from Russia, and maybe this island, or this set of islands, I should say. And then I'll have a complete monopoly on all of the Indian Ocean. Um, the K Turkish Caliphate is pretty much it's something I'm not really worrying about anymore. I, like, as you saw at the beginning of the video, they are actually trying to raise relations with us. That's fine with me. Um, probably try to keep them negative so I can get border events and stuff with them. But it takes a long time to complete wars with them. And uh, for that reason, I have a lot of war exhaustion, as you can see here. <clears throat> so that is a problem, and I can't maintain that uh, forever. Um, I don't even remember what my militancy is, but it's well below what, yeah, I could be doing lots of other stuff if it didn't take me two years or something to complete a war with the Turkish Caliphate. Um, my next war goal is Sokoto, um, but I'm going to be putting that off as long as possible to keep um, my militancy down because it's extremely dangerous. Oh, speaking of militancy, um, I had plans to basically pick a point in the game where my militancy was really high and engineer, uh, as I had discussed earlier in the, earlier in the series, a, like, a big civil war type thing. Um, it, that's, 
not necessarily something that's really hard to set up. It just requires a certain amount of believability in the scenario for that to work. Um, and right now, it kind of does, but only in India. Um, and the rest of them are not, like, separatists or anything. Um, I also notice I say um a lot. Really, though, I want to cut down on the modding I have to do, because I'm going to have to do so much modding for um, Hearts of Iron that it's going to be um, probably like a month between this and Hearts of Iron, just because I, I, you know, I do this when I feel like it, not, you know, there are times when I've made videos because I felt I had to, but doing modding is a completely different thing, um, and it's not like I, uh, I have any kind of set schedule for doing it. I mean, it took me about a week between um, EU3 and this, but that was a relatively easy transition. And in fact, I, I it probably would have taken me longer if I had kept, uh, had stuck with the converter instead of doing everything from scratch. So yeah. Okay. Um, let's get started because I've been rambling too long. Our my goals for this session, it may be a shorter session is I'm going to try to manipulate the Austria situation into forming something. Now, Scandinavia, there was a bug with Scandinavia, and they were in two people's sphere. Um, so I removed them from both spheres and put them at, like, one from all of them. Um, just to see if the game would fix the, the bug itself. Um, now, what that might do is just make it so that they don't do anything at all with them, but, you know, whatever. Um... So just to try to manipulate the situation, I can basically, like, say I wanted to keep Rome out of Scandin from meddling with Scandinavia. I would raise my relations, or my influence with them, really high. And then, whenever Rome tries to get really high, I block them. And basically do that to everyone but Austria, as a, as a kind of way to manipulate the situation. Because all Austria needs is this right here, I think. <clears throat> yes, because this is not part of the German Empire, Franschkant, or however you pronounce that. Um, yeah, neither is this. So, for the most part, they've got everything they need, and they'll be like, and they'll probably kill Hungary. I think they're at war with them. Yeah, they might not. <clears throat> but uh, Austria, I believe, has a truce with Scandinavia at the moment. No, okay, so yeah. I don't know why they hate us. I don't know they liked us. Maybe that's a bug too. Um. Because I've been raising relations with everyone. In any case, um. That's the kind of thing I'm going to be working on. And as you can see, I already started doing that in the last session. I don't know if I paid any attention to that. Um, I'm going to be cutting off a lot of people uh, in hopes of them joining the other side because I don't need as much help uh, as other people do, and I'd rather France join like Austria's block or at least Occitania's block than stay in mine because <clears throat> the more interesting the situation is, the better. Uh, and some things have just been kind of too static because of my interference. Uh, the whole France situation was really static until I started fucking everybody up. Um, in the Spain situation, I don't know, if I could trigger something to make them try to form Spain, I would do it, but I, I can't think of a way to do it with three states like that. So, in the Rome situation, I don't know, I'm just kind of thinking of leaving Rome to the dogs, so to speak. I'm still allied with them, and I, I hope they recover from this, but, um, I'll take advantage of the situation as much as possible. Um taking Azerbaijan, if, if they lose this, and, like, I don't even know what that would revolt into. Persia, it looks like. Um, then I would certainly take advantage of the situation. Right now, I, I don't want to be blocking them for the, from the rest of this, so. But, uh, once they started losing 
countries outright to revolts. You know, there's nothing really I can do to help that aside from get military access and kill all the rebels for me, which will raise my my uh, militancy. So, and right now I'm more worried about my country collapsing than their country. The situation in Asia is pretty much the same as it always was. I have a feeling the Turkish Caliphate is going to make a move soon. I don't know why. Uh, maybe because I've played <laughs> this session several times before, and it may, you know, be the case that in three of the four times I tried to do that, they've uh, conquered somebody. And that wasn't always the same person, but... Uh, so it's not like I know something is imminent. I like how they're still allied with Palatsk and they keep fighting them. Here they are. Okay. Um. Whoa! I didn't even notice that. I'll have to. I could fix that in game because I can't fix that with other ones because they keep blocking me. Anyway, uh, I'll be back when uh, something else interesting happens, and uh, we'll be moving towards our goal of this session for fighting Sakoto. Uh, there really a lot to be a lot of cutouts here because I'm going to be doing literally nothing until the moment I can take advantage of the situation. I basically want to get it before the Dutch do or the Romans, and that's just what I'll be doing. Okay, in in the interest of keeping our militancy down, which basically I just have to wait. Um, I'm going to have to probably enact quite a few of these. Um, What's the one that gives me the most bonus? Well, this is pop militancy, so that's good. Uh, yeah, so I'll be I'll be doing those periodically. I will I will show those. Oh yeah, something I forgot to do. Um, oh, and I also want to like get rid of this stuff. Um, so what could I do? Oh, scan any of you? Okay. Good. And in France, I can do something with whatever. I'll, I'll go to friendly, but then I'm going to turn it off. So now I can interfere if somebody if somebody does something really bad. But um, yeah, for the most part, I'm in Bhutan. You know, whatever. I don't care. So I'll be focusing just on. Actually, things that you have 100% on, you can just leave on because it's not taking any points. Um, but what it does is means you don't have to micromanage it when you use the points for something like, I don't know, decreasing the opinion of the Turkish Caliphate. So, yeah. Now it'll build back up. Um, yeah, an unconventional use of the influence system. Actually, I should be focusing solely on Palatsk for right now. So that I can remove them from the Turkish Caliphate sphere so that weird shit doesn't happen. Oh, and something else I noticed that I have a lot of really unprofitable factories. Um, I'm going to be doing away with them as soon as I discover, like, uh, some of the more advanced things. Like, I'm losing a lot of money from this. But the Lowlands is a great place to have factories, and so I just kind of want to keep this slot here to... Um, so that I can have it open to do stuff with it, uh, so it's not filled with some kind of other factory. But for the most part, I'm just going to be closing um, unprofitable and bankrupt factories from now on, because the AI is, for some reason, usually ends up being a little bit better at just inflating your uh, your um, industry score than focusing solely on stuff you need, <laughs> which is what I do. So, yeah, we'll probably see a lot of these cement factories go away. They're good for baseline stuff, but they stop being, you know, that good. And as you can see, I'm getting a 20%, 25% penalty because of stuff I've done, eight-hour workday and stuff like that. That's fine. I don't really care about how much money I'm making. Um, that sort of thing doesn't really affect your industry score. So, it's only about the profitability of the factory, not how much money you're actually making. Um... Although, like, luxury goods does enter into that. 
Um, yeah. Alright, this is the thing that I've pretty much held the line on throughout the whole game, no matter what, how bad it got for um, militancy purposes. I've always kept the discriminatory school system to keep my people assimilating at a good clip, and I'm still going to stick with that, even though I'm, I'm basically going to give way as much as I can on anything that lowers militancy so that I can get back into doing things I need to do sooner. So I'm not going to go forward on that, even though it raises my militancy. Um, so just uh, keep in mind that I'm also doing that when you see if you see my militancy jump a little bit, even though I'm trying to lower it. We finished the tech naval decision making. Um, gives us really good bonuses. Um, I think I need steel breach loaded artillery next. Yeah. Uh, just because that's such a good bonus. So, yeah, what I'm really waiting for here is. Where is it? This and this. As you can see, it activates electric gears and electric power. These two are not such a big deal, but 6% uh, you know, chance, so they'll probably happen fairly soon. We'll see. Well, the Papal States have declared war on Modena, probably for this little bit right here. Um, so... I was thinking that Rome was going to kill Modena, but never really got around to to doing it. So I guess uh, I guess they'll be doing their own thing about it. And here we go. We got the two ones I didn't really care that much about, but we did get electric power. So not electric gears yet. So I'm going to be going through and closing all of my unprofitable factories and rebuilding with electric power plants auto and telephone factories. And I'll probably actually... What? Why can't I... It's not a colony. Oh, uh, whatever. Um... Yeah. I'll probably build like five electrical factories, maybe more than that, but um, as you close various types of factories, they make the other ones more profitable, and this is probably the one I want to leave the open of my um, artillery factories, and this would be a very good place for a coal-fired power plant. Um, build something else there too. How about a... I'm just gonna leave it open. They can build whatever they want there. Apparently I don't have a cement factory there anymore. So I'm gonna leave this one open even though it's unprof unprofitable at the moment. It'll probably be fine. I'm just gonna get rid of this. They can build a new one there. Do whatever they want. I'm gonna get rid of these stock exchanges. That's not very much. So I'm not losing very much on that I should say. It's just costing me money. Let's see, those workers can be moved to the other factories. See, something like this. A level 5 factory that's losing me that much money. You don't really want to keep. Okay, let's this. Um, steel factories, though. Steel is important enough that I'll still subsidize it. This. I don't know how many that is, but I'm going to build two more after this. Artillery factory. I'm going to build an airplane factory there. What ifs? <laughs> I just want to get rid of the chaff. 
and let the market, I suppose, do its thing for the rest of it. And the majority of these are in, are in England, but uh, it doesn't really matter. That's probably my biggest ammunition plant, but if I close the rest of them, ammunition's usually sort of unprofitable. This. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna get rid of a couple of steel factories. If you're that unprofitable, you only really need a couple of places building something, especially for something like artillery. Glass. Um, I'm just gonna close this. Just to make that more profitable. Yeah, that shit just really seems unprofitable at the moment. I'm gonna leave that. Oh, jeez. No, no. You stay open. That's just losing so much money. I don't even know. Let's rebuild it as... I don't know. Fabric factory. And <laughs> this is just unprofitable as a baseline. I'm wondering why I can't build anything in Somali land. some of these factories. Like I said, I'm going to leave that one. And I'm just going to let everybody else... Yeah, because like these are... I could have sworn they were... Um... Places I could build factories. And I'll just let, let the game basically replace... Replace it with whatever they want for these unprofitable ones. And it seems like there's a lot of duplicates. I don't know if that's bugged or not. Or if they're just different types of factories. This is like an early canned food factory or something, I don't know. But whatever. Um... Pharmaceuticals are just really unprofitable, looks like. Okay, well, that's good enough if, it, if I didn't get anything, everything. Um, uh, that one's really unprofitable. Okay, so let's see if this it really affects anything with this right away. There we go. See that? See how big that jumped? So now we have one really profitable factory after losing a bunch of shitty factories. Alright, this is the last straw with Chile, basically. Chile is getting into a war that's really stupid against Brazil. Um, and I don't really feel like helping them. Um, and I think Brazil's allied with somebody I don't want to be messing with. Mysterious. Hmm. And they're in Rome's sphere, so... I'm going to decline this. It's unfortunate, but it had to be done. We've got a capital for investors discovery, which increases our share production, but um, I pretty much curtailed that because it was really unprofitable. We'll see if this has any effect on anything. Well, looks like it might be curtains for Korea. Um, well, actually, no. I don't think Japan can... Conquer them and want to go. Are they so blessed? They are. Okay, so maybe they can. Um, although they may not have the 
infamy required to do it. We'll see how that turns out. Well, this is something that's not unexpected. Um, after fighting the Guangxi clique for many years, they declared one of them yet again. Um, this time, however, they are going to annex them. Which they cannot do, because they cannot capture Hainan. Um, they need a 100% war success. And it is impossible for them... Well, I guess one of their allies could do it, but they're not really allied with anyone who can do anything about it. Because Palazzo doesn't have a coast. I guess Burma... Maybe... No, Burma doesn't either. What the hell am I talking about? Um, Siam could. So, if Siam has ships, they can they can seal the deal for the Turkish Caliphate. Uh, we will see if they actually do so, though. So, Austria's gotten peace from Hungary. Snatching off a little piece of them. Slavonia. Um, which I believe is a very good industrial area. Which is 53% Serbian. <laughs> okay. Whatever. And Croatia gets white peace because they were after the same thing. So, looks like Croatia gets the short end of the deal here. Speaking of Serbia, the pan-nationalists are victorious, which I don't know what that means. Some kind of rebels did something. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, and it looks like Japan is not going for the annex here. They're just going after a single state. Um, I've been turning down a lot of alliances and stuff because I don't want to get involved in their politickings. But this one is particularly notable in that I don't want to be allied with Azerbaijan in case Rome gets their shit together and wants to attack them. Or, Rome doesn't get their shit together and I want to attack them. So, just keep that in mind. Except that I clicked the wrong one. Whatever. I can always break the lines. Derp. So, we discovered Pierre Joseph Proudhon. How do you pronounce that? It's a prestige. Yeah. First, to, the first to the poll. The Royal Geographical Geographic Society has. Oh. Okay, I'll do this one first. And while I, do, while I do not claim to represent all the workers of the Celtic Union, I do make the claim that I represent at least some of them. And that I do represent, and those that I do represent tell me this, we need better wages. Prices have increased, in some cases twofold, over the past few years. And this must be reflected in the pockets of not, not only the capitalists, not only of the capitalists. Famous labor agitator has been has a meeting with some fairly important members of our cabinet, and it seems that he was able to make some impression on them. The general feeling of the cabinet is that we should consider our minimum wage legislation. There's also a faction arguing that it might, in fact, be better to go the opposite direction. We could say we, could, we need to abolish some of these reforms, we get no minimum wage, all poor strata gain two militancy, all middle strata gain one militancy and both of which gain one consciousness, and all rich try to lose two militancy and gain one consciousness. So pretty much one consciousness across the board. Um, I don't want to do that because four strata are pretty much the bread and butter of my empire. We need not do anything rash, which increases our militancy for poor strata by one and rich reduces it by one for a rich strata. Or, um, we could say we need to push forward with the reform, gain four militancy for rich strata, gain two consciousness for rich strata, um, two militancy and two consciousness for middle, and poor lose two militancy and gain one consciousness. Um, now, I'm not going to do this because this basically removes one of my stopgap measures, um, so we're going to do this, uh, which raised that a lot, but... I, it, it would be a more efficient use of my militancy, so to speak, to enact that on my own rather than through an event. 
Uh, the Royal Geographic Society has announced that, the award would, that an award would be presented to the first expedition that reached the North Pole. You say we choose to outfit an expedition and lose 10,000 pounds. What a shame that would be. Or we could say, we must consider this proposition and lose 5 prestige. We could say, is there anything worth discovering in the frozen north and lose 10 prestige? Well, there's no reason to do either. Why would you do that? I guess this activates events later, and this one just turns them all off. But we're going to do this and lose all of our stuff to Krakens or something. Well, on the downside of that, Rebels! Okay, this doesn't look so bad. Um... Well, this, this looks easily containable. Except for that. Holy crap. Let's just set it to do this. I get some over here. I've got an army somewhere. There we go. Okay, do I have anything closer than that? Nope. Okay. And I like just setting my orders all right away. And then amending them later if they need amending. Honkin' armies. Oops. Okay, holy head. <laughs> Just whales. Okay. Whatevs. They're reactionaries too, so they're like, we want to be the king. Or they we want, they want the king to be awesome, I guess. You wouldn't think the Welsh would be into that, but whatevs. Well, the English Celtic king. They wouldn't be into that. And this is in India, so... That is a big fucking army. And it's not even taking any attrition, but let's split that up. That's just silly. Wait. That's cool. Okay. Um... Yeah, this just this shouldn't be too bad. Oops. Okay. So you go in there. Let's just fix this path a bit. Okay. And I'll go through and fix if it needs any more fixing. The Celtic Red Star, a news daily with no shame about its political leanings, has been incorporated in Cairo. The Celtic Red Star, official party organ of the Celtic Social for this Celtic Socialist Party. The Red Star publishes deeply moving social commentary, seldom without picturesque little reports of the conditions of working men and women across the country. The Red Star stands, or so it claims, for international solidarity, workers' rights, unionism, and class struggle on a broad, democratic, and socialist basis. We could say, I suggest under the club, they start a subscription. Gin anyone? In the rich strata? Uh, become 1% more conscious, or socialist, gain 0.5 consciousness, and gain 1 militancy. I'm going to say, what is this horrible piece of paper? A fish and chips wrapping? And the poor strata gain half as much militancy, um, the same amount of consciousness, and become 5% more socialist. I'm not less worried about my rich strata, though. I'll get a slightly less militancy. Bloody strike! A strike today in one of our states, initiated by communist troublemakers and revolutionaries, was swiftly put down by local police. The event that caused the that has caused a massive backlash against the socialist movement of the state in the state, as local farmers and peasants perceive the red ideology as being vehemently opposed to the traditions and histories of civilization in general and the Celtic Union, more appropriately. More importantly, we could say, let us hope that this will end this revolutionary prattle. Hyderabad becomes 10% more conservative. We lose one mil and get They get strike solution until 1896, which raises our farming and mining efficiency. Um, and But the plight of the workers, exploitation by the ruling classes. And we gain 10% more socialist with unhealed pops, gain one mil and and they have the same strike solution thing. Uh, socialism is something that people have been arguing for and against, but for right now, I think losing militancy is something I need to do at the moment, so I will be picking this one. Yeah. Here's another discovery. Continuous issuing, continuous issuing of orders.
Warriors. She gives us organization bonus. Okay, here's a kind of indication of how things can kind of spiral out of control if you leave them out, uh, leave them go. Uh, I'm gaining more exhaustion again because of these revolts. So, you remember when I put that one in place and would have lower, lowered and raised my militancy in some areas? No, that's a way better use of that. Um, but it's still going to be raised by a lot because of this stupid thing. Um, so that's one of the reasons that you can get into it, like a spiral of revolt like Rome is. So. Okay, looks like Mongolia has uh, annexed one of the little breakout countries that, I don't know, they left because of some kind of revolt. Not, min not much of a big deal. Not much of a big deal. Okay, I missed the message, but uh, Japan has grabbed this northern bit of Korea, which is the their war goal. So they're down to one state. We have discovered social conscience, which increases our plurality by 5%. It's already at 100%, I think. And social reform desire of plus 5%. So, yeah, that's good. And the Papal States have defeated Mo uh, Modena and have... Yeah, gotten this little bit out of them. No. 